Hi everyone, Charles here for ML New Papers, second video on the channel. So for the new joiners, I'm a PhD student in machine learning, and on this channel, I share with you my take on the most recent and the most inspiring research papers that I come across in my research life in a hopefully nice and approachable way. On this channel, I try to cover many different topics within machine learning, because this is the key to make connections between topics and boost our scientific creativity. And today, we are going to explore an inspiring paper on loss functions, which derives a general bound on the risk of estimators in binary classification. To this paper is titled Moduli of Convexity and Surrogate Regret Bounds. It has been written by Humbau and was published this year, 2023, at the prestigious conference on learning theory. In this video, I will first introduce one very quick property of convex functions useful for today, as well as some required background knowledge on loss functions and surrogate losses, which help to understand today's topic. Then, I will introduce the paper's main result and its application to boundary error in binary classification. And finally, there is one little bonus at the end of this video, so make sure to watch till the end. Let's jump in. Some of you may already know a lot about convex functions, but for our purposes here, I just want to recall one fundamental characteristic of convex functions. f is a convex function on Rd if and only if its plot is above its tangent spaces at x0 for any x0 in Rd. Mathematically, this translates as this for differentiable functions. Now, an important property of convex functions is Jensen's inequality. f of the expectation of x is smaller than the expectation of f of x. In today's paper, we will use the following corollary of Jensen's inequality, which states that if f is also increasing, then the expectation of f minus 1 of x is smaller than f minus 1 of the expectation of x. Convex functions? Done. Now, let's see some quick background on loss functions. Take any supervised classification task. For example, the task of phase detection. Given an image x, we want to predict its feature y, which is equal to 1 if there is a human face on it, and 0 otherwise. Formally, we want to find a function psi, called a predictor, such that, given any image x, it returns the correct label y. Let eta be the target function, then if we knew eta, we can easily derive the best predictor of y given x, whose values are in 0, 1. We do not know eta, but if we can estimate it with some eta hat, then we can also define its associated predictor by replacing eta by eta hat in the previous formula. And therefore, the problem boils down to finding a good estimate eta hat of a target function eta. Now, probably the best way to evaluate our estimator eta hat is the 0, 1 loss. So for any fixed given pair x, y, the 0, 1 loss of our predictor is equal to 0 if the label y is correctly predicted and 1 otherwise. The 0, 1 risk is defined as the expectation of the 0, 1 loss on the pairs x, y. At this point, it might be tempting to look for eta hat minimizing the 0, 1 risk. However, this problem is extremely difficult because the 0, 1 loss only takes the values 0 and 1. It is highly irregular and the least little error in eta hat of x may induce the maximum loss equal to 1. Instead, loss function experts usually define another loss L called a surrogate loss, which should have the following three characteristics. First, it should be proper. I won't get into the details here, but I do on my blog mlnewpapers.com if you're interested. Second, it should be easier to minimize than the 0, 1 loss. That's why we chose it. Third, it should be able to evaluate estimates eta hat of x with values on the whole interval 0, 1. The surrogate risk is defined as the expectation of surrogate loss on the pairs x, y. The idea here is that it is hard to find eta hat minimizing the 0, 1 risk. So instead, we look for eta hat minimizing the surrogate risk. This paper proves that eta hat also has a small 0, 1 risk. So before we start, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. That really helps the channel. Thank you. Let's jump into the paper. So let L be a proper surrogate loss function. I won't get into the details of properness, but it simply means that the minimizer of a loss is the ground truth, or target, eta of x. This ensures that when you minimize it, your minimizer eta hat of x is close to the target eta of x. We now introduce a few definitions to formalize the risk of any estimator eta hat based on the surrogate loss L. Given some fixed x, recall that y is a Bernoulli distribution of parameter eta of x. The pointwise risk L of eta hat at some fixed x 
is defined as the expectation with respect to y of L of y eta hat of x. Given some fixed x, the pointwise bias risk L infimum at ground truth eta of x is the smallest possible pointwise risk at eta of x. For any fixed x, we define the pointwise regret of eta hat of x at ground truth eta of x as the difference between the pointwise risk L and the pointwise bias risk L infimum. Importantly, as the objective pointwise suggests, the pointwise regret as well as the pointwise risks are risk measures of eta hat of x at one fixed x and not globally on all x's. The global risk measure on all x's is the full regret, which is the expectation x of the pointwise regret. Now say that we obtain an estimate eta hat of a target function eta. How do we guarantee that its associated predictor has a small zero one risk? An existing result states that the zero one risk is smaller than a function of absolute value of eta minus eta hat. Therefore, it only remains to bound this term. The novelty of this paper is to provide a bound based on the modulus of convexity. So for any convex function f, the modulus of convexity is a type of measure of a curvature of f, and therefore of its degree of convexity. On the plot, it corresponds to the length of the shortest red line. Now the negative pointwise bias risk minus L infimum is convex, and therefore its modulus of convexity is well defined. The first technical result of a paper is to bound the modulus of convexity of the absolute value of eta of x minus eta hat of x by the pointwise regret at x. Now this bound is not so friendly, because the modulus delta is not a convex function, so we're going to replace it by its double convex conjugate, which is convex. So I'm not going to give any details on the double convex conjugate, but a double convex conjugate of delta is always smaller than delta. The reason why we do that is that, as its name suggests, the double convex conjugate is convex, and we will need convexity to apply Jensen's inequality. Then we compose by its inverse, and this gives the main result of a paper, which is a bound on the absolute value of eta minus eta hat. Now remember that we can bound the zero one risk by the bound on the absolute value of eta minus eta hat. Then using the main result of a paper, we can replace eta minus eta hat by the inverse of a double convex conjugate of the modulus of convexity. And since the double convex conjugate is convex, we can use the variant of Jensen's inequality mentioned in the introduction. And finally, we obtain an upper bound on the zero one risk given as a function of the full regret of eta hat. Therefore, if the full regret of eta hat is small, then its zero one regret is small too. Finally, the paper also shows that this bound on the zero one regret tends to zero polynomially fast. So now here is the bonus. It's a little question that I thought about when I read the paper. So the point here is not to check the understanding of a paper. I personally think that we are all on a machine learning journey and that all along that journey, our understanding evolves as we gain experience and knowledge on a wide variety of topics. But I just thought of this little bonus question, which is not written explicitly in the paper. And I thought that some of us may have some fun trying to figure it out. So here it is. In the paper, they state a condition which is sufficient and necessary for a surrogate loss to be proper. And based on this, the author claims that from any concave function h, we can generate a regular proper loss function lh. They further give some explicit formulas for this loss. So my question is, where do those formulas come from? The point here is not to prove that this loss function is proper. On the contrary, I am simply asking about the intuition behind those formulas. I have written the answer to this little question on my blog. Now for all the papers that I cover on this channel, I post an article on my blog, mlnewpapers.com. Among others, I have included there some fundamental results on convex functions, and I have put a link to the amazing paper that we have explored today. If you're interested, make sure to check it out. I'll put a link in the description down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of the next video. I'll upload new content every week, so stay tuned. Also feel free to share the content on any social media platform, Twitter or rather X, Facebook and so on. Finally, if you have any suggestion for the channel or the blog, please let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to have your feedback, including about little bonus question at the end. I'm quite new on YouTube, so I am trying out different formats and ideas to make the best content for you. Now that's it for today's paper. Thank you again so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.